What's up, everybody? My name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. And uh, throw in the chat your guess as to what quad that was. Um, take a guess, like what what rig it was. If you don't know my rigs, like what prop size um, and what camera. Those three things. Or if you just know, you know, all those things that are on each on one of my rigs, just call that rig out. And uh, I'm interested to see what you guys say. Who's in the chat? Pulling the chat on over. Tiago was first, then it was T-Bird. Toxic FPV, Rixipated, Dauntless. Uh, B-Man is here. Guillermo is here. G Guillermo, I, 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 uh, I, I don't know how to play that game very well. It, it, as you guys don't, as you guys know, um, I was on Bot's uh, Twitch stream last night playing that Among Us game, and like I'm not good at it, <laughs> and. Uh, and there's a little, uh, there's a medical scanner thing, and like, I didn't know that you, that you had to have the, that task to do the medical scanner thing. I thought just everybody could do it, and Guillermo wasn't doing it, and I was like, oh, it's gotta be, <laughs> he's, he would have done it if, if, if he could. And I, uh, and I threw him under the bus, and then, uh, everybody threw him out of the airlock, and he wasn't the bad guy. So. You might be infamous, Guillermo. But people trust me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I had a good time last night. Uh, t to be honest, I I like just doing the tasks in that game. Like uh, that game to me is like is just trying to avoid the murderer and get as many tasks done as possible. Um, probably because that was my career for <laughs> like twenty years. <laughs> so go figure. Um, but yeah, it's a fun game. I I, I just. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a um, there's a card game called The Resistance. Here, let me uh, let me school you guys on uh, on tabletop gaming. So a, a bunch of years ago, uh, Will Wheaton did a uh, a show when he was with Geek and Sundry called Tabletop, and uh, a card game. And uh, Kristen and I were, were watching a lot of YouTube at the time when we stumbled across it, and the, the show was, was amazing. Very well done show. Will is an awesome dude. And um, the, the, t the, the board games that he had, had on there were, like, amazing. Like, he really did a good job picking the best ones. And uh, so we got all into, her and I got all into board games for a little while there, for, like, a couple years. And, um, yeah, the Among Us is basically just this. Uh, this game called The Resistance, which uh, it's actually a really good card game. So if, if you like that uh, video game <laughs> and uh, you want a three-dimensional version of it that you can touch and feel, I mean, it's not identical, but it's, it's very, very similar. The, the ethos of the game is very similar. Um, yeah, there you go, The Resistance. And uh, if you don't use one of my affiliate links for Amazon, I'll cut your head off. <laughs> Or whatever they do in the... I guess that you get cut in half, you get stabbed, you get shot, I think, are the, are the finishing moves in, uh, <laughs> in that game. All right, so we're going to uh, we're gonna finish a Tiny Whoop, and then that's going to be it. So this, as I was talking, I've been talking about recently, I want to try to shorten these streams up a little bit. So um, I'm not going to try to build four... Tiny oops in this stream. I'm just going to try to finish this one that I'm about halfway on. So we're going to jump over there. Let me just get caught up on the chat super quick. B-Man says what's up. T-Bird says what's up. Uh, thought you were going to be a no-show. Nah, if I schedule it, I'll be here. Um, that's why I schedule them so late because, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, B-Man says did Narfle the Garthok today. <laughs> Dauntless says uh, Acrobat Duo Go Pro 7. Uh, all right, who else? Uh, T-Bird thinks 6-inch glide. Guillermo rightly thinks one of yours. Uh, B-Man says, I don't understand the premise of that game. Uh, just try to win. What's wrong with me? Uh, that, so that was... Um, that was the, the duo through the run cam hybrid. Um, I believe it was, it was carrying the Insta360 Go at the time, um, but that memory card I pulled out of the run cam hybrid. So how about that shit for, for 
for footage, and that's straight out of the camera. I have the I have the run cam hybrid set up to record like as close to flat as I can get it. So I have like the contrast turned all the way down, um, the sharpness turned all the way down. Um, I forget what I did with the white balance, but yeah, it's it's it the the video needs to be um, color corrected uh, that comes out of this. But you guys were just looking at it raw, um, but yeah, the the detail is really good. Um, and as you can see, no more Jello, no more bullshit on uh, on the Acrobrat because of these wonderful X Nova eighteen oh four thirty five hundreds. This is a little weapon right now. In in this setup, like being able to carry around the the Insta three sixty Go and having the the run cam hybrid here this thing will do 4s 5s 6s um, it automatically scales the voltage for each one it'll carry like a, 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 shit i could run this really light on a 4s 450 for about a minute and a half all the way up to like a, a 6s 650 um, for like four or five minutes um, the the stan fpv ducts do i do have four of them left although they're kind of pointless because the first time you bounce, you touch anything with them, they just explode. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I've, I've, I don't really know. I don't understand the point of, of the Stan FPV ducks, if I'm totally honest with you guys, but, um, I have them. So technically speaking, this could be, you know, finger proof. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I put this extra little TPU loop just for funsies on the back, um, which is a cool, it's actually a cool, uh, perspective because it looks it's the the Insta 360 Go is so wide that it does look right at the the quad, but you get enough width where like you'll see. I'll, I'll get some uh, I'll get some footage off of this, and uh, you'll be you'll be shocked at how cool it is. Um, but yeah, man, this is a little weapon. I don't know. This is a hell of a contender for like one rig to do everything. Maybe even I mean it might even be the one right. Like this will also carry. A, uh, a GoPro Hero or a, se a Session or a Hero. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you're going to say, like, one rig for, for, for everything, it can't be a 5-inch because they're too loud and they're too dangerous. Um, it's got to be something of this size. And um, I don't know, man. This is a, these 1804s really turned this into a, uh, into a weapon. Because it's so easy to tune, the tune is like so unbelievably locked in. Um, it's got shitloads of power. Uh, it can pick stuff up. It's got you know those motors have a ton of torque. They have a ton of mechanical um, torque. So if, if you were to put like a really pitchy prop on it and load it down like five six hundred grams, it wouldn't really care about it. Um, Matthew Smiley's Aviation Center says it's called Resistance, and you can play it with normal playing. Can you really? Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, you could totally play it with normal playing cards. Um, uh, June Loco is here. Doc Murdoch is here. Uh, Rick Zapata is. He says, "Look at the Flywoo four-inch long range and let me know if it's any good right now." You can get the analog version for 140. Um, Rick Zapata, every single review I've seen on that um, says that it's good. I have absolutely no interest or experience with long-range stuff. Um, so when I look at it, I'm gonna go, "Oh, these motors are way too small. Oh, these arms are way too thin. Oh, this uh, the." you know, arm configuration is going to be weak. Um, it's, you know, it's it, long range is just not my thing at all. But, um, like I said, everybody, every single review, I mean, if you just type flywoo four inch long range, um, into the Google search, um, I think Joshua just reviewed it even and loved it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I've yet to see a bad word about it. So, um, and man, 140 bucks is really cheap. If I had any interest in long range, um, I might jump on that as well. Uh, and then Larry says, do you have any words about the fallout between uh, Kebab and Stan FPV? Um, yeah, I, I talked to Kebab about that yesterday or the day before. Um, and uh, Kebab is, is being – I, I expected him to be way more angry about it. I mean, not because he's an angry guy, but just because, um, I don't know, I'd be fucking pissed if I were him. Um uh, he he just kind of said he's just kind of like let's move on Let, let's let's just um, let's yeah uh, and and kebab's motor is going to be different um, there are some things about the the stand motor that I don't really understand um, uh, 
mainly why you would have such a wide stator without the bigger bearing. Um, that's the going to be the big advantage of, of Kebab's motor. I think he's said that publicly before. I hope he has. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I have no... I, I have... I'm very interested in the size of Stan's motor, but without the bigger bearing, I mean, no. I'm, I'm not interested in it at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it's impossible to say, like, ooh. It's impossible to say Stan's an asshole, he stole it, or Bob's being a crybaby, they worked together on it, right? Like, the only people that know the actual situation are those two guys. Um, so it's, it's pointless to, to throw stones because maybe Stan's in the right. We don't know. Maybe Bob's in the right. We don't know. Maybe it was a fucking misunderstanding, like what happens all over the time, all over the place. Right. Um, I'm sure it was a miscommunication that led to, a whatever. Right. Um, it sucks, but, uh, I, whatever we move on. Uh, in, uh, in much more frustrating news, I spent 200 more dollars on another, um, it's a landing zone dock thing here for the laptop so that I can use the, uh, so I can get the fuck off this old ass 13 year old tower and onto this six year old laptop. Um, but for the second time now, the fucking USB doesn't work. Uh, so... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's going back to Amazon as it, the the original one. I don't know what I'm going to do with. Probably back on eBay. Uh, whatever. Um, brrr, Dauntless says, Zing E, any good? 2306. Those T-Motor Velox have, su have super high 6S KV. Um, Dauntless, if you're on uh, Betaflight, just bring it down. You actually want that um, because you can bring it down in um on the pid screen in beta flight 4.2 and then what's nice about that is we're you know like the the johnny fpv prop for example right it's like a 4.8 or 4.9 and it's a very low pitch you have to spin the shit out of that prop to get any power out of it but if you do that um you're good to go so by going with the veloxes um you have that ability uh i personally i'm buying 24 or 2600 kV motors now, like across the board for five inch, and then just scaling them down in beta flight, because the the actual um, efficiency difference from the the 1900 kV windings or 1850 or 18 whatever it is versus 2400, 2500, 2600 um, is negligible according to Ryan Harris, who he's the guy that's gonna know. Um, so yeah, and and by doing that, by buying 2600 kV uh, motors, if for whatever reason I need to run 4S, I can just set that up in Betaflight as a profile, and it'll actually automatically select that. Um, it's a really, really, really cool function in Betaflight that um, could have saved me a lot of... It, it wouldn't have saved me money because I, I ended up breaking all of the old 2400 motors, uh, KV motors that I had when I switched to 1600, um, but it would have saved me a lot of hassle of like, oh shit, I need one more for this. Oh, well now there's three. Well, I, I just won't use these staters and then I'll put these staters on the, right? Like it, it would be really nice to just buy a motor and not, th and just not have to think about the KV anymore. And that's pretty much what I'm doing. And the only way to do that is to buy the highest KV, right? Because you can't go, you can't go up. You can only go down. Well, I mean, you can go up, but you have to do it with voltage and maybe the ESC won't like it um but yeah uh get the uh the uh, the problem with the zing motors is they're quite a bit heavier than the um than the t motors uh and motor weight is something that you wouldn't believe the the, the difference in performance of um if you want to test this get a set um of <clears throat> If you have like TPU uh, protectors on the ends of your arms, or if you have uh, Rotor Riot skids on your arms, go to the go out to the field with all of your batteries charged. Um, pick the halfway point. At the halfway point, take those uh, take the TPU and the skids off the TPU and or the skids off of all four arms, and fly your next four batteries. And I can almost guarantee you you will feel a difference and you 
my reaction was, oh my god, like it was a huge difference. And this was this wasn't even when I was all that great um, of a pilot. This was like two years ago. Um, this was a long, long, long time ago. Um, so yeah, motor weight is a big, big, big deal. And the Zing motors, they they seem to be maybe a little bit more durable, but the the weight sacrifices it, yeah it's just not worth the extra weight in my opinion the the veloxes seem to be plenty durable i haven't banged them up that bad yet but um i've slammed them and, and had crashes where i'm like they're fucked and i walk out to it and they're fine i'm like okay that's pretty good um t-bird fpv says osd problem with flywoo <sighs> well you know there's never been a bind and fly that's been just like good top to bottom. Why would they start now? Um, T Bird, if you don't mind, um, whoever was asking, let them know. Uh, Rick Zapata. Um, uh, that's really frustrating. Uh, and then Dauntless says, uh, oh, that's a good point. So you can run uh, super low pitch props like the watermelon, and the next month go to uh, Lemon Line Ethic props, for example. Yeah, it's, that's another really good point, Dauntless. Um, it, it, um, even within. Yeah, even within five inch props, um, you can right. You can take a super low pitch prop and spin the shit out of it and see what it feels like. Even though uh, the 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 S threes are not necessarily meant for that. Like the 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 Johnny props are actually meant to be spun really hard. The the S threes are not. They're meant to just make less power, right? Like Steel designed those specifically for his very um chopped power band right at the top of the throttle his rig doesn't make much much power so the s3s were kind of designed for that um i have heard of people spinning them to crazy rpm um and they don't blow up but it's interesting because you can you can test that out right you can take the s3 prop exactly like you just said and see what it feels like when you put a ton of rpm into it um or alternatively you can take a huge pitch prop and just cool it the fuck down <laughs> so it doesn't blow your ESC up. Just, you know, back the throttle off to a sane level. And then it's it's basically a way of shifting um, the the part of the, the throttle throw where you have your most resolution. If, if for whatever reason you need to go really fast and you want your resolution to be on the top of the throttle, you can go up to a higher pitch prop and bring your, your, your um, motor uh, percentage down a little bit. So, uh, Dan says, I flight bind and flight seem to, uh, uh, I flight BNF seem to work. Um, seems to work. Is that it? Is that, that's good, right? <laughs> um, let's, uh, see if, see how long I can fend off the rage rhino. <laughs> Otherwise known as build a tiny whoop. Uh, let's get you guys zoomed in a little bit, and we are off. Uh, actually, let me go grab a, uh, a drink of water, and I do, I want to give you guys another little tiny bit of the, uh, of the footage, now that you know what it is, um, of the footage from that, uh, Acrobrat, and the Run Cam Hybrid. Um, the run cam, man, I, I'm, I know I say this, I feel like I say this a lot, but the run cam hybrid f HD footage, it's, it's just, it's melting my brain. I just don't know how it's, it's not perfect. Oh God, no. Oh God, no. It's not perfect by any means, but it is so much better than anything that we've had up until this point. Yeah, and like it's kind of green because I don't have the uh, the white balance set properly. But again, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's about I have the settings so that I can color correct properly in Premiere. Um, I don't have the settings to look good right out of camera. Oh, come on, man. What the hell? Come on. 
Uh, this one's 1 1.8 gig. Yeah, let's do this one. Oh my god, computer, I'm gonna light you on fire and I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Yeah, do that. Highlight it. That's, I was hoping you would do that. That's a good idea. Um, which one? Let's try this one. I'll be right back. Oh, for Christ's sakes, where is it? <laughs> Man uses computer poorly. 2020. Come on now. Don't. Don't. Why is it plugged? Okay. All right, here you guys go. Can you guys tell that, like, that there's, there's, like, a confidence to the way that... I think it's, it's me being more confident on the sticks because the tune is more locked in, but, like, it's just not as, uh... It's not as, like, razor edgy as, uh... As any other micro. I couldn't believe it fell off that stair. <laughs> I was so annoyed. Um... Yeah, it's just, it's not twitchy like every other, um, and I, and I use twitchy in the most loving possible way, but, um, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, there's a real, there's just a, a real different, more mature, more dialed in, more, um, refined is maybe the word, feel to the Acrobrat on these 1804s. Um, than I've ever had on any micro. Like, it, it just... It just feels right. And that, you know... And, and I've mentioned before, like, I, I would love to stop saying like a 5-inch, right? Because that's everything that... that uh, it's just good, right? We can just re replace that with the word good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's... Uh, yeah, it's that locked-in looseness. Uh, Jason Crabtree, they are the X Nova 3500KV. Um, 1804s. I don't know if there are any other 1804s. Uh, if, if there are, I would love to try them. Uh, just because I can... I, I, you know, one thing is, is never good enough. You always have to search for something better if, if you're a lunatic like me. Uh... <laughs> But, um, yeah, they are next level. I mean, uh, here's the thing, though. Like, yes, they are the right size. The, the, that 1804 um, stator size is something that I've been waiting for for about three years now. Um, a long, long, long time ago, I remember actually having the conversation with Brad um, on the phone of, like, dude, I, I, <clears throat> I don't understand why micros have these motors that are so tall but so narrow um and uh you know we had a because at the time we were flying these um 
little tiny 2S, uh, like 100 or so, no, a little bit heavier, like 120 or so gram all up weight uh, rigs on 1103s. And they felt so good on 1103s, but then when we started to go up to like 1105 and 1106 and 1107, um, it, they just felt like shit. And then we found, um, we found these RCX 1304s on my RC Mart, and we got those, and then they felt amazing. So it, it was like this sequence of events happened. Um, but then, like, that was kind of it because we didn't really have the ability to like get motors made um so it was just sort of i mean ever since then it's just sort of been me screaming and yelling it <laughs> to anyone that'll that'll listen um but luckily one of those people that was willing to listen is named bob Rugi. <laughs> so uh yeah i had i i had i remember talking to him about that way 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 long ago uh, before he started up in micros and it's so so I, I'm, I'm just so happy that uh, it's it's come to be a thing and, and that we actually have some options now for motors of these sizes and the performance is amazing um, I don't give a fuck who gets credit for it as long as it, it exists so that I can fly it like that's all it's ever been with micros is like I don't want credit for shit. I just want this stuff to... I, I just want the right motor size to exist. <laughs> so, like, I, it's kind of just selfish. Like, I, I just... I want it for me. Like, you guys can have it too, obviously, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm looking out for number one here. <laughs> Come on, little gorilla arm thing. Stop being a jerk. Just trying to put you in the downward tray table position, you little fucking penis. Come on. There we go. Uh, okay, so where are we at with this? Uh, Doc Murdoch says, which 1102 10,000 kV motors would you recommend? I didn't know that there were any options. I thought it was only Happy Model that made them. Um, I, 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 I... So, you know, I, I just... <laughs> Now you know that I don't know shit about them, so my opinion is pretty much worthless. But um, <laughs> I would go with whatever ones are the smoothest, but I don't know the answer to that, and nobody else um, is paying attention to me with this whole smoothness being everything thing. So, yeah. I got nothing for you, brother. I'm sorry. But uh, if, if somebody in the collective maybe has a set... That, and and they speak up right now and say, hey, I got these ones and they're smooth, then those are the ones that you should go with because smoothness is everything when it comes to micros. I will take a motor that makes less power but is smoother all day every day because I want my PID tune to be locked in and I also want to make cool footage that's not all jello-y. I'm doing the cardinal sin right now and using wire clippers on these. Uh, when you're doing, when you're stripping tiny little wires, uh, I would say like anything, like I would say like 30 gauge, 28 gauge, 26 gauge, maybe even 24 gauge. Um, only use your fingernails because there are so few strands in there that using anything metal, even one of those uh, purpose-built wire stripper fancy jibber jabbers, um, anything with, with metal runs the risk of uh, nicking one of the strands of wire in there. And with these tiny little gauge uh, wires, each one of those, there, there's not many, like, there's like, I swear to God, sometimes it looks like, the, it looks like there's like eight of them in there, <laughs> so like, you nick one of those and it falls off, well, shit, you just made that wire, what, 12 point something percent worse, um, so yeah, don't do it, don't do it, use your fingernails, it works. 
And if you don't have fingernails, go do something nice for the lady in your life or the gentleman. Hopefully, hopefully it's not a relationship with two dudes, neither of which have fingernails. I don't know what the hell would happen. But, uh, yeah, go do something nice. They're probably mad at you anyway because you're spending too fucking much time on this infinitely time-consuming hobby, so it'll be, uh, it'll be good in both ways. I'll save your, your relationship and your quad sanity. Brandon's Baked Beans is here! Uh, full CT in there. Uh, oh, you, what are you guys fixing? Uh, slipping motor shafts? I, oh my god, I, I... It's... That is like one of the more maddening things to ever happen. Uh, Dauntless Age, great question. Where do you get your GoPro sessions uh, and mounts? I get the sessions from eBay. Uh, I, I just have an eBay alert. So every single day I get an email telling me every single GoPro Session 5 that's been uh, listed in the last 24 hours. And uh, I get the mounts from either BMC, typically from BMC 3D, um, but sometimes from uh, Brain 3D. Uh, the owners of each shop are really good friends. They both do incredible work. And uh, yeah. Their, their designs are phenomenal. That, that's, that, I, typically, I can't find a better designed mount on Thingiverse to, to even have the conversation of, you know, why are you spending money on those mounts? But here's the other thing, too, right? Um, not everybody realizes that, like, they're... So, hold on. Let me show you one. Um... Here's one. I only like I only ever have to buy I only buy these these things once. Like these are invincible because of the fact that they're made of TPU and you can just melt them back together. So it's it's like, you know, why do you spend all that it, it's not like a disposable thing. Like I buy one and it I have them that have been melted back together like 20 times before and they're fine. It, it, it doesn't happen often. It happens like, it basically happens when I on the re, on the wrecks that total the rig. So like if the entire, if the entire quad is essentially on fire, uh, sometimes the TPU will be ripped, and you just, yeah, you just fix it real quick. <laughs> I'll fix it right there with a lighter. Just, a, a torch works better, but yeah. Um, yeah, you basically put it. You put it in the in the the real life printer um man these are, i was i was thinking about grabbing a the little headset thingy because these this is really hard to see but i'm just gonna i'll be all right i'll be all right and this way i'll look like a little bit less of an idiot which is always a good thing um so yeah i'm soldering these directly to the uh they put pads on the outside here and uh, so I'm soldering directly to them because these motor wires are a little bit too short um, for the pusher uh, variant of this uh, red shifters frame. Um, if I'd gotten the non-pusher variant or if I used any motor other than these newbie drone motors, like, I, I managed to find the one very specific combination of, uh, <laughs> of motor and, um, red shifters frame that won't work together. Go figure, right? But, I think I also found the combination that is gonna work the, sort of the best together, basically. Which is, you know... Thus, my willingness to do this rather than just go ah fuck it I'll just get the other frame because the the red shifters frames are really inexpensive <laughs> they're like seventeen dollars it's great um, just go get a couple they're um, they're super interesting being able to have the camera up in front down low like that ugh so cool and um, 
So yeah, do that. Wow, that uh, that went really well. Nobody tried to. Uh, nobody even remotely tried to bridge. Which is when you're soldering to a tiny. If you've soldered to a tiny whip, you'll know everything tries to bridge. It's just nonstop. Like every single pad is perfectly close together, and they all just want to be friends. I mean, I can't blame them. Just want to be friends, that's all. And as we all know, or have been told, FPV is friendship, right? <laughs> uh, oh, I've never understood that one. I mean, how can it be friendship? Friendship is friendship. FPV's a hobby. All right. Other side. So I think, I think once this is done, I mean, we're good. I, I believe that's, that's it. I believe we're, we just smacked this thing back together. I'm going to put the receiver under it and we're going to be good. Brandon's Baked Bean says, what's this? 2S uh, Acro B? It used to be. Now it's going to be a 2S um, uh, Acro B, Acro B Electronics, uh, Red Shifters, uh, pusher, uh, pusher frame. What's it called? It's called the Zero Grav. That's what it is. Zero Grav 65 pusher. Uh, Dauntless says salt. Oh yeah, salter. Uh, hey, Ryan Ferguson's here. What's up, brother? Uh, working on my micro alien build, I've put together the stack and taken it apart about 20 times tonight. <laughs> now I understand why micro builds take you so long. Yeah, it's it's important to do that though, Ryan. Um, what's what's nice is uh, if you build the same thing the second time, it, it'll you'll it'll build like a regular five inch rig. Um, but if you change anything, then yeah, you'll have to do it 800 times in a row again. Um, it's just packaging, right? Like it's it's just you're taking a, a box of assorted bricks and trying to put them into, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, looking for where I left off in the goddamn chat. There it is. Uh, Speedy Turtle is here. What's up, brother? B Man FPV says, "Hey, man, I'm constantly in the doghouse because of this fucking hobby." Uh, Wilder says, "Dan says, I know you don't fly Falco, but what are your thoughts on the new H7 flight controller?" Um, uh, I mean, so the the H7 thing. I mean, shit. I I was talking to Schizo about the H7 thing like back when I lived in Charleston. Um, so it, it's not like it's not new. Um, Basically, the, the discussion that we had was because of the fact that um, uh, uh, Flight One, Falco, whatever the hell, I don't even know what the company is called anymore, but because their flight software relies on um, the, the processor to do most of the filtering rather than allowing um, the built-in hardware filters... Uh, it needs all the power that it can get. So the the eight yeah going up in processor is is a big deal for for Falco because of the way they choose to to deal with the vibrations. Unfortunately, it's not going to make the situation any better. Um, it, 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 it's 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 going to allow them to process more data, but the data that they're processing is garbage data. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, there's not going to be any any flight performance increase. Um, that's been, um, from what I've seen, that that's been proven. That um, going beyond uh, four or even eight k um, is pointless, um, and it's just junk data. So, yeah, they'll they'll be able to process more junk data with it, though. That that's for sure. Um, so you'll be able to turn numbers up, and you know, and that'll that'll be a good marketing. Uh, campaign for them. Uh, Doc Murdoch says, looks like Gep RC uh, makes some too. Race Day Quads carries them. Looks like Banggood is main outlet for the Happy Model ones. Uh, are you guys talking about the 1102s maybe? 
Um, if Gep RC makes the 11, makes 1102s, I would get those. Uh, I've been, I was uh, I've only seen one set of Gep RC Gep RC motors, but man, they were really really nice. Um, and then Speedy Turtle says, "What do you think of uh, Cadex Orca or Runcam Orange?" Uh, I have tried both of those. The Cadex Orca uh, fail uh, exploded on the very first crash. That was not even much of a crash. Um, and then the uh, the Runcam Orange. Uh, died after two crashes, uh, one of which was half a crash. Uh, yeah, the the video quality on the on the run cam. Well, wait, no, the run cam orange. I think that's the old one. Um, that one, as what well, was not great. The 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 box five, the quality was okay, but I mean the durability thing, like that. There's no, I mean that, that's that's a total deal deal breaker for me. Um, so I mean it, and it and it, it kind of should be for you too, mainly because um, you can't get a warranty on them, right? So like, if 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 you do crash into a tree branch and it explodes, you would have at that point been better off. Um, so here's the deal, right? With a, we're gonna crash, no matter what. Um, to get one of, to get a, a camera, which is gonna take a lot of the impact because it's up front. Um, to get a camera without uh, a warranty that'll cover physical damage, I, I think is is kind of silly. Um, Yes, the upfront cost of getting a camera with physical damage protection is a lot higher, um, but I really, I don't think there's any way that it's not going to um, pay off in the long run. If nothing else, then when you've got a camera on the front of your rig that you do have insurance on, you're going to fly so much better than if you've got an uninsured $100 box on, on the front, right? Uh, and that's a big deal because it's hard to fly these things and, and um, it's very rewarding to get footage that looks, um, that looks really good. So, yeah, I would do, um, I would scour eBay for Session 5s and then you can get, um, uh, or you know what? I would even do an Insta 360 Go. I would do an Insta 360 Go before uh, either one of those guys, and you can get those from Best Buy, uh, and they'll do the Geek Squad protection, or you can get them from Amazon, and they'll do the Vanguard insurance, which does cover cover physical damage. Um, doesn't cover loss, so of course make sure that you've got a good mount, um, a really good mount. But uh, yeah. I would uh, I would definitely say to go that route. Which, it's funny. Like, I remember, I remember thinking three years ago. Like, there's no way I will ever, 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 ever in a million years fly a GoPro on a quad. It's just way too expensive. It's not worth it. Dirt, 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 dirt. Um. But yeah, I mean, when when you look at like when you look at how many GoPro sessions, you know, when, when you've like replay, when you've used these warranties a few times, the price of the camera goes drastically plummeting down. Um, and, uh, and yeah, shit happens. And even if you're the best pilot in the world, stuff is going to break and you're going to fall out of the sky and the cameras are going to explode. They're cameras, right? They're, they're not meant to be strong, like, at all, now that we don't have Sessions anymore. Session, it seems, is pretty much the only camera that's ever been built um, that's had some thought of durability in mind. And, uh, yeah, that's why I will go down with the fucking ship on the Session 5. <laughs> I will fly Session 5s in until they're a thousand dollars per <laughs> because they'll I mean yeah they'll 
And well, also, and and also, they're insured um, through the GoPro five dollar a month thing, um, which is a total fucking game changer. Like I, I just put my broken one uh, in the in the mail with the RMA stuff, and uh, GoPro sending me a a, wor- a fully functioning Hero Five as soon as this one gets to them. Um, so yeah, it's kind of kind of amazing how is this solder being so stubborn get off of there solder there it goes jesus hey roscoe sticks with one a thank you for the a roscoe sticks i'm assuming that's an australian dollar i have i have uh, i have australian dollars somewhere in a box somewhere i have a whole bunch of australian currency from when i spent three weeks there uh, Dauntless says, do you get warranty on the sessions? I sure do. Looks like I was talking about it d- without even knowing there was a question. Uh, B-Man FPV says, Gep RC 1103-8000 KV motors are speedy little fuckers on a 3-inch toothpick. Hard to beat. Nice. Uh, how notchy are they, B-Man? Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Dan says, GoPro might be coming out with a new session. They're running, uh, competition spe- uh, asking specifically for FPV videos. No shit. Um, Dalton says, isn't a session an unwarranted $100 box rate? Yeah, we just talked about that, though. Um, and then B-Man says, uh, he's using a Runcam 5 Orange. Got to say the images aren't bad uh, for 89 bucks. Can't really go wrong. You can't. 89 bucks is a great deal for the Runcam 5 box thingy, um, but without a warranty, it's, it's not worth it. Um, ha- is there a way to get a warranty on it, B-Man? That's my question for you. you you'll know better than me. Uh, not to mention they uh, they are as durable as the session. They're basically the same size. I did not have that experience, B-Man. Uh, the, the first crash that I had on mine was not bad, and the case cracked from the front to the back. Uh, and uh, on the second crash, which was a little bit harder, but, I mean, it was a crash that a Session 5 would have very easily taken. Um, it, it failed. So I had a really bad uh, durability experience with mine, uh, which, you know, means nothing, really, right? Um, uh, but I, I haven't heard of I, I haven't heard of many people using them. I, I feel like if they were, yeah, I don't know, maybe not. I, what I was gonna say is I feel like if they were durable, that people would be using them. Um, but uh, I don't know about that. Um, because. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I was, um, I was, uh, when, when I first used it before flying it, I was, um, and I saw the image quality, I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, this could be, like, workable. Uh, but then it broke. Like, I, I was really looking forward to doing an edit with it. Um, I, and it was going to be the, uh, I was going to do, like, a, a budget build with it, too, right? Budget camera, budget build, makes sense. Um, but it, it didn't last long enough. I was like, oh, oh, okay. Stop it, wire. Stop trying to go over to your little buddy there. Go straight. Ah, there we go. All right, last one. And then we'll do the fourth motor, reassemble, and wrap this shit show up. What do you guys think of that? Because I think this, uh, I think the flight controller is configured and everything. Maybe not. Maybe you guys will get to see a setup too. Although, actually, I can just do a dump from the... Uh, I can actually just take a dump. You know what I mean? You guys know what I mean. Eh? Eh? Taking dumps? Uh, B-Man says the 1103s are maybe a little notchy, but not bad at all. Awesome. Uh, 1103s are typically not notchy because they just don't have enough magnet and stator in there. Um, but if you put if you make an 1103 with a... N52 magnet, it can be very notchy. Uh, RCX actually, RCX has a has an they've had this for like ever, 
1103 10,000 kV motor that makes a, a just goddamn metric ton of power uh, for its size, but it's notchy as hell, so it's, it's like, untunable. Um... B Man has blasted his RC5 a few times. What's RC5? Oh, Run Camp 5. Uh, maybe mine's got nine lives. <laughs> or maybe the TPU mount I'm giving, uh, using gives a little shock absorption. Yeah, I was I was using, uh, since it, it's the same size as the session, I was using it in my, uh, in these, uh, in these big, beautiful BMC 3D mounts that have the, all the, you know, all the extra protection that I'm always ranting and raving about on here so it and the battery strap as well so i mean it, it had every it had every every chance to to live <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's you know it's it's made by run cam and not gopro right so you you can't possibly expect um the uh the durability to be the same um but it's, uh, if there's a way to get a warranty on it, then I'm down. But, yeah, I mean, you know what it is, too? Like, for I, I would rather put a run cam hybrid inside so that it doesn't, right? And, and then it's not going to get the shit smashed out of it. Um, and it's going to, and, and basically all that, all that is, is a run cam hybrid in there, <laughs> Like the the run cam hybrid sensor and, and software and all that stuff, um, is is just that run cam box five, right? Why why would run cam not share the four K sensor and, and software? Why would they change anything? Um, but it's uh, well, yeah. No, I guess then it's stuck in that rig, right? The the whole point of the external camera is that you can. Move it from rig to rig to rig to rig to rig. Um, I mean, I guess if you can buy it on Am as long as you can buy it on Amazon, I guess you can get a Shurion, right? I think a Shurion just basically covers. I think their plans are just basically like digital camera that's from two hundred to three hundred dollars for, you know, seven dollars, and then they have a plan that's. Digital cameras, a hundred to two hundred dollars. That's six dollars, and then they just have to, you know, cross their fingers that we forget <laughs> or lose the whole damn thing. <laughs> Look at all that orange! Holy shit! What are you guys talking about? Um, Not a bad mount. Where can I get that? Didn't see that design on Etsy. No, B man. Um, this, yeah, Speedy Turtle got it. Brain three D. Uh, this mount is the the way that this mount is set up is one of the main reasons why um, I began ordering from BMC three D. Um, I, I looked at the different. Basically, when when I finally did get a uh, a GoPro a, a Session Five. I was like, dude, and like, you know, I see people running the, the steel setup with the fucking foam wedge and shit. I'm like, yeah, not in a million years, bro. Um, I just went on a bender to, to figure out the most durable possible mounting solution for the damn thing. Um, and looked at uh, Brain 3D had side load mounts, so I ordered one of those for the glide, um, and then, uh, I found front mount, uh, I found front mount setups without those extra little bumpers that I was just showing you guys, uh, and then eventually I found BMC 3D, which had the front load with those extra little bumpers. I was like, yep, that's exactly what I need, um, because those are gonna, s and, and they really do, those little bumpers do exactly what you think they would. They they get the shit kicked out of them because they're they stick out the farthest and and they hit. And then what's really nice is they kind of like fold themselves over the the front of the GoPro and you can really tell this because the um <clears throat> the one on the bottom uh it it like folds up when you smash the chin on stuff and you can just barely get the uh the bottom of the GoPro to hit, but the ones on the side, 
uh, are a little bit bigger, and, and they also they come towards the front to kind of like lock the GoPro in there, and uh, and the the so the bottom the chin of my GoPros are all scratched up, but then the sides are always perfect, <clears throat> and the top barely gets scratched up too because the the top piece. Um, in conjunction with the battery strap kind of come down and just protect it. I don't know. It, it's a... Uh, <laughs> they're, they're just a phenomenal mount. The design is just perfect. It's a little heavy, um, but it's, it's basically an extra 5 grams. Um, and that's worth it for the durability for me. Which is, uh, for those of you that know me, that's a big deal. Uh, because five grams is a lot. I would, uh, I would sacrifice a lot to uh, to lose five grams on a five-inch build. Like a, I would sacrifice a chicken, child. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> squirrel. Oh, yeah. Look at us go tonight. We are soldering fools. I do have to touch up that middle one there, though. That middle one looks like absolute ass. So I checked this already. I don't know how I missed that. Um, so I'm going to amend my usual uh, check your work, and I'm going to say check your work and then check it again sometimes. Because I totally missed this. It wasn't that bad. It would have been completely fine. But um, it definitely <coughs> benefited just now from a tiny little bit more solder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Way better. And I didn't even bridge it. Look at me go. Um, beta FPV. Uh, th these pads are very close together. But they did something cool with the way that they mounted um, these little plug headers and they kind of integrated it with these pads on the side and I'm not having much trouble with them bridging uh, which I was I was definitely expecting uh, I was expecting to have trouble but yeah they're um, they were no trouble at all that was kind of nice Kind of nice of them to uh, to behave like that. So we've got the world's smallest little squid. Look at guys! Look at the little squiddy. Oh, wait, where's the camera? Oh, the oh, farts. I have to do the thing with the camera. I have to put a longer. I have to camera, put a camera on here with a longer lead. God damn it, I forgot about that. Oh! Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Don't freak out. Look at that. The world's smallest little squid. Okay. <laughs> T-Bird says left ball for five grams. <laughs> oh my god, it, it really pisses me off that... that the, 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 this cable is like a goddamn millimeter too short <laughs> um, to really properly use this camera. Um, ugh, God damn it, Larry. Okay, uh, there's no use getting all angry. So now I need to get another camera into this little uh, this little area here and I think that this one is too wide yeah so this is the uh, this is the OV 231 that you can get from uh, FPV cycle and or is it wait is it a tall is it meant to be tall I mean that's the way the silk screening is but then, wait, it's not going to fit in this little... There's no way in hell it's going to fit in that mount. No way. No way. Okay, so this this camera we definitely can't use. Uh, what else is there? 
Let's see what we've got. Um, te I mean, technically I could... Ugh. They use that goddamn liquid electrical tape. I mean, I could desolder the leads off this one and, um, and just gouge my eyes out with hot pokers as I then have to solder directly to the back of one of these tiny ass little cameras. Um, that's probably what you guys want to see me do, right? Yes, you can, Dauntless. I'm sure they're not sending fresh, brand new sessions, um, but I mean, I'll tell you what they send when when they send it. Uh, they got one on the way to me. Oh God, be man! I don't know. I'm I'm it. I don't know. I want to. I definitely want to. Um, if I'm gonna do it, I'll put something up tomorrow to give you um, to give you guys a little bit of time. Uh, don't get rid of that OV two thirty one. Uh, you can't get them anywhere. And they're really nice for the weight. Yeah, I know metal. I, I have a um, uh, my plan was to use it on a um, um, toothpick, but uh, my toothpick has never worked. Uh, it's on one of those new the new gen run cam nano whatever the hell it is board cam that. Everybody says it's not nearly as good as the um, previous one. Where the hell? Here's a camera. What's this? This is a camera. All right. Uh, what about that one? Does that one have a camera? A camera? Yeah. Shit sticks. I think I'm going to have to gouge my eyes out. And, um, oh my god, this is going to be awful. And solder to, oh no, you know what? This might not be that bad. They put through holes. <gasps> no. No, they didn't put through holes. That would be incredibly helpful. Why would they do that? That's, uh, that's not, that's not something that normally happens. So maybe, maybe I have one of these cameras with cables that are a little bit longer. Uh, I am just desperate to be able to use this. It would be so nice to be able to use this, um, camera that comes with the with the newbie drone with the plug because of the way this build is and dude this is a little this one is for sure a little bit longer I mean like that that is not my imagination that is definitely a little bit longer but like I I literally think it's only like a millimeter longer <laughs> yeah it's it's I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's longer enough. Uh, I mean, technically, I could cut the connector off and then direct solder, but no. <laughs> no. I'm not doing that. Um, that's not how this is going to go down. Uh, oh, well, that's interesting, too. These are... Oh. Oh. These are two different cameras. Oh, I'll be damned. Oh! <gasps> oh, 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 oh! This one, it exits on the left. <gasps> Guys, this is it. It's, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Oh my god. That is fucking terrific news. <gasps> Guys! Guys, hold on. I got just the thing. Oh shit, where is it? Here it is. Enjoy. Hey, great.
great news. What? The Dacia Sandero is almost here. When? Next year. Great. Now, the Toyota Urban Cruiser. Oh, bad news. What? The Dacia Sandero. It's delayed. Oh, no. Anyway, last week... Great news. What? The Dacia... <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> The Dacia Sandero has gone on sale in the left-hand drive market. Nice. Now... Oh, good news. What? The Dacia Sandero will have electronic brake force distribution. Great. Now, OK, we've all got motoring heroes, yeah? Great news. What? The Dacia Sandero. I've got a new picture. Ooh. Anyway... Hey, great news. What? I've been sent more information on the Dacia Sandero. Excellent. Excellent, hey now. James, bad news. The Dacia Sandero. The what? The Dacia Sandero is not coming to the UK. Oh. Now, uh, British car. Great news! They've done an off road version of the Dacia Sandero. Fooled by the Rano badge, that's the Dacia, that baby. What the hell are you on about? It's a Dacia. It's a Dacia! I Dacia! Know it says, I just said that. Big news. Is it the Dacia? Dacia. No. Um, it's the European Car of the Year 2008 is the replacement for the Vauxhall Vectra. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vauxhall Insignia. It's, you have to look that up, though, didn't you? Yeah. News <laughs> chaps. No, what? There's a new what? Dacia. And I've got a... Thank you. I've got a picture of it. Here it is, it's one of the lockies. That's a looker, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, moving on. It's a looker, news. isn't it? Dacia Sandero is on sale in the UK, <laughs> taking the nation by storm. Taking the nation Great. by storm. Now, the Mercedes SLS. There it is. <laughs> yes, and right, it's so I have to remember. bad news. Bottom Dacia left. Dacia have got their name wrong. Have you seen the car ads they've been doing? They're Bottom left. Dacia. Okay. I think that's because that's how you say it in Romania where it's built. You know what it's Good news because the Dacia Maybe it's not bottom Duster left. I think I had this thing upside down. How the hell can you tell what side's up on these yeah. fucking things? Great. Now I bought a bicycle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What do you guys know about that? One more. One more thick and chunky. Picture James drew of a man. Tara, she's agreed to go out to lunch with him. Has <laughs> 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 she seen this? Well, I think, yeah. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time talking to Gabriel. I've never noticed that she's got two noses. <laughs> <laughs> It's very touching, but it's just not very it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's really touching, and I can't draw, but that's why I don't. It's called James May's Quack Laugh. Uh, the word newbie drone is at the top, is it? Why is that? Hey, if you guys like uh, Top Gear and or James May, you should look up James May's um, wine show called... He goes with Oz. Yeah, Oz Clark and James May. Drink to Britain. That's what it's called. Drink to Britain. Look it up. James May is the fucking man. He's my favorite of the uh, of the Top Gear presenters for so many reasons. You guys want a shit stick sticker? What the fuck would a shit stick sticker look like? 
shit, man. This uh, this camera is a lot taller. I don't know if it's gonna fit in this mount. Um. Oh my god, I have to really pull on this mount. Oh my god, TPU, you are the stretchiest shit in the world. I can't believe it so easily just said, now I'm cool, bro. Um, wow. Okay, never mind. It's totally fine. <laughs> uh, okay, so for this side, it's going to kind of mash down on the... Uh, on the wires here. I wish I could put the wires out, but I really don't think it's gonna. I'm gonna be able to stretch it quite that far. But um, yeah, let's see what. Let's see what we got here. So maybe maybe they'll be fine. Maybe they'll just push over and they'll be fine. That that's what I. They didn't come out quite this straight. No, nah, you know what? I should push them over. I should not let the TPU be the thing that flattens them. Well, uh, I don't love it. They, they put too much goddamn liquid electric tape, but... Um, it's 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock, so, you know. How you doing at work? Okay. Kristen's going away to uh, Florida tomorrow, so that's one of the big reasons I'm thinking of doing a 24-hour stream. So, because you know, that way I don't keep her up 24 hours with my screaming and ranting and pissing and moaning. Look at that, guys! It's on the correct side now, and it'll definitely reach. I say definitely with my tongue pushed so hard into my cheek that I'm bleeding. Uh, Glide ESC for those T Moron 1950 KV motors. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of these uh, Akon AK35 30x30s. Uh, the one thing that you have to do though, and this is a small price to pay for an ESC that has been bulletproof um, for me, for Max Beamer, for Cricket. Um, these are the guys that I know that crash really hard. Um, you run a little bead of epoxy. There, there's like a secondary board in the middle here. Um, and if you flat bottom hard enough, and it's got to be like real hard, um, you can break this board off. So if you just take a, a, a run like a little bead of epoxy, uh, around the outside of that, it fixes the problem, and you're left with, like, the, I, I, don't, I don't know, to me, I, I don't have any reason to buy any other ESC than this for any 5-inch rig. It, it's just so good. Um, I have just never had an ESC that that's lived more than a couple months, and I've got AK on, AK-32s that are, like, going on a year, I want to I, I say. Don't quote me on that exact number, but, uh, yeah. I won't, I, I probably won't buy any other ESC ever. <laughs> um, yeah, because, I mean, it, in, unless there's some, you know, BL Heli 64 or some shit like that, uh, to me, an ESC is just uh, like a box. Like, it, it doesn't do anything that, uh, that's really noteworthy performance-wise. Even like, and I, I, I hate to say this, but for, for a regular 5-inch rig, you can even kind of say that about BL Heli S versus BL Heli 32. BL Heli S with um, JESC, I, I've yet to hear anybody say there's any improvement um, uh, from running uh, BL Heli 32. Maybe there is, and I just haven't read it, um, which could totally be the case because I don't, I don't hang out in the, in the, uh, in the super tech oriented um, quad groups that often anymore. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know. ESCs for me, it's it's just like ninety nine percent of the decision is made by durability. So, and um, yeah, they're they're just a you know they're they're a pain in the ass to change and like there's just all these reasons for that too like such a fucking pain in the ass when they let go I hate when an ESC fails and if you're somewhere unrecoverable when it fails I mean good luck like like you're kind of done <laughs> there's no like like with a banged up motor or a banged up prop I mean, there's a chance, right? Like, but uh, when an ESC goes, it is game over. Although I guess if just one, if if only one channel goes, um, and you're on a rooftop or something like that, I I guess you could maybe just arm it and blast it really hard to to maybe get it thrown up over the corner of the roof or something like that. But I, I think you guys know what I'm saying when. With that, and it's annoying too because like there's always a fancy new shiny ESC coming out, right? Like they're they're um, they're easy to generate marketing hype for, and it's an it's an easy thing to like. Ooh, I need it. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I don't know. I try to just find one that works and then just buy that one over and over and over again. Which I know is very boring, but... Oh, my God. Okay. Um, yeah, these frames are definitely more challenging to put together, for sure. Um, like, right now I'm dealing with this situation where one of these uh, little grommets came out. Because the, the grommets kind of sit, like in the frame um, it, it doesn't they don't slide down over the top um, so what you have to do is um, you have to push the corners of the board onto the grommets which is hard to do because they they make the corners of the board like like this right the corners of the board aren't aren't like that so that you can just slide them on they're like this so they, right, they just, <laughs> right, they, uh, they make that noise, don't they? Uh, okay, let's try this again. So I'm, I'm going, oh wait, no, oh my god, I almost forgot to put the, uh, the goddamn receiver down there. Oh, that would have been absolutely maddening. Um, so the question is, do I... No, I don't. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to sneak this down there. And it's going to be... We're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. I was about to ask if I should uh, desolder the receiver and then re-solder it. But that shit ain't happening. Boys and girls. It ain't going down like that so all right it's gonna go right under here and hopefully there's gonna be enough room for it um, there'll definitely be enough room for it if I un I have these uh, these antennas under the shrink wrap kind of running the length which is a really good way to hold them down but there's a chance that because of that, it's not going to want to sit flat, flat enough. Um, I think it's going to be alright though. I'm just going to hope for the best. I'm just going to blindly hope. That's, that always works out for me when I do it. I don't do it often. But it's definitely never backfired on me. Um, so I'm going to ram it through those holes in the frame that I was telling you guys about last time, which are like so handy. I know they're not meant for 
antenna routing, but god damn, I'm glad that I'm doing it that way. So, this one is the one. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run one out the back. I'm gonna run run out run run one out the back, and one out the side. That way, we get our ninety with them. It satisfies my OCD more to run them left and right, but uh, they this ain't a crossfire receiver, so there's really no reason to do that. We're not trying to get a full wavelength with the with the antenna this is uh this is actual diversity so we're we're trying to um prevent dead spots in this case with the antennas and both antennas are doing the exact same thing um so you want to put them in different orientations to cover up any nulls from the other one rather than trying to use them to make one big long run because that's that's basically what the 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 crossfire antenna is is trying to accomplish um and when you make an immortal l out of it like steel does um you do give up some performance but with freestyle you typically don't need mega uh, long range performance although the the lines are being blurred more and more uh, which is why I've been running immortal T's on uh, on my little slip slaps on me little bing bongs oh my god these words what are these words Did the chat die or something? You guys still there? Don't let's ask that question and then... It's been crickets. Did you guys all leave? Am I here alone? If I'm here alone, I'll start doing good work. <laughs> I make all my, stake, my, my mistakes when you guys are watching. All right, so I, I put this USB protector on here and now it's in the way, of course. All right, so here we go. The receiver is where I want it. Let's see if I can get this guy in here without pushing any of these grommets out of here. There you guys are. Sleepy. Oh yeah, it is, uh, it is a school night, huh? Who's uh, who's got to be up earliest? <laughs> Type in the chat what time you got to be awake. <laughs> it's a terrible game. Terrible, terrible, terrible game. Uh, what if I go... No. Alright. And here we go. Next. On the side. Alright. And then we're going to go... Down to the bottom here. Yeah, Newbie Drone makes their little uh, corners like extra sharp too to really hold on to the grommet, which I love. Um, but on this frame, it makes it a little bit harder. That's all right though. You just keep just keep screwing around with it. Don't get don't freak out. No matter what you do, don't freak out. There we go. See that? And then the last one. So I think I may be starting to figure out a trick to do this. I think you kind of like hold the bottom and the top like this. And then you can just kind of grab the corner and pull it. Maybe not. Oh, so you gotta be able to pull the board, ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, you gotta pull the board away from it. And then, yeah, so I think that, that works pretty well. So, 
and you grab this guy with your left hand here so that you can pull on it and then you grab the board with your fingernail so that you can pull them away from each other right and then that gives you enough room to drop the board down so now we get to see if it's gonna fit down here so here on the bottom we've got the receiver all smashed in there and it's not looking great well no it moves um, so yeah <laughs> I don't love it um, I mean it's not wedged in so bad that it doesn't move so that's a uh, that's a really good thing um, Eesh. Oish. I'm going to run it like this. And then if we have um, motor heat and, and vibration issues, I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to take a look at it because it's, it's basically not... I mean... It's not allowing the AIO to, to sit perfectly cleanly on the rubber grommets. Like they're pushing down into it a little bit. But that might not matter. Um, how effective the, the rubber grommets are on a tiny whoop, I have always been very suspect of. So maybe it doesn't matter. I'm going to screw these motors on. What do you guys think of that? And shit, man, we're almost done. This is, uh, this is, good. I mean, we're good. We got this thing all wrapped up already. Can I put another spin on this motor, I wonder? Get this motor wire nice and tight so it rips off. I like to get my motor tighter, motor motor wires tight enough that they rip right the hell off. Um, nah, I'm not gonna put an extra spin on it because I would rather push the motor wires over like that. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's get these motors screwed on here, and then um, you know that'll take like an hour because. These goddamn screws are so small. Um, but, you know, we'll get there eventually. Late night stream and all. I'm excited to get this done because I'm going to go play some Gran Turismo Sports. I've been really, really, really enjoying that game. Um, since I got it last week, I, I'm, I'm still, I still can't believe how good it is. <laughs> like, I, I really, I do not keep up on video games, so it's pretty normal for me to be shocked at how good a video game is when I eventually see it. Um, I usually don't see them until they've been out for a long time. But I have a better feel for uh, driving games, and, and I kind of pay more attention to driving games. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how. I'm, I, I, I think like because I, I was sort of being like Meh, about like I don't want to get it until I have a a, a sim set up. Uh, but it's been really fun to play with a controller, and and it almost has me. Um, kind of like uh, sim setup not really necessary possibly kind of thing not true at all I mean it, I would love to have a sim setup but I mean I don't have room for a fucking 3D printer I certainly don't have, a, have room for the goddamn driver side cockpit of, a, of an automobile essentially right which is what you're doing with a 
with a sim rig. <laughs> so, yeah. Someday. Worth the wait. Oh, yeah. See, and, and the, the VR thing, too. That That's what, like... That's actually what I'm really excited about with, um, with a, uh, with motorsports games, and, um, yeah, I, I am so, 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 so looking forward to, uh, to the future of, of VR driving games, that, like, when, when we get shit like iRacing, uh, with the, uh, with VR, it, it's just going to be ridiculous. I mean, we're going to be able to have, like... Yeah, the... The, the um... Proposed skill gap between... Real drivers and sim drivers... Will just continue to, uh... To shrink. Which will be great. That's a good thing. Because driving is driving. The non-sim drivers don't want you to know that, but it is true. Alright, you little bastard, come on. This, uh, this screwdriver's magnetism <clears throat> has been really hanging in there. Just from that, like, three seconds that I had it on... Uh, the bell of a um, uh, an admittedly strong motor. I, I bounced around the bell the other day on the stream of the uh, the brother hubby twenty five oh eight or twenty five oh seven. So like you know, I picked a big boy, and I'm glad I did. Come on, you little jerk. And, uh, and the other, the, the, the big problem for me with the, the sim rig is that I know enough about it, um, to know that, uh, the wheel doesn't matter as much as the pedals, um, and getting a pedal set with a load cell rather than just a fucking spring, um, is kind of everything. Well, it, 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 it'll be everything for me because I come from real driving. Um, if, if you, if, if your background is sim driving, you can get used to the, um, the cheaper pedal sets, but yeah, if, if you're trying to simulate a real car and, and I, and like my instincts and everything are at a point where I could, where, where I, I would have to do that, um, So yeah, and and the, those are uh, those are a little pricey, and I, I actually I've been meaning to do a little bit of research on them to see how pricey they they really are. Like I I know they're they're obnoxious, but um, I don't know if they're like a thousand dollars obnoxious or like ten grand obnoxious. I'm pretty sure they're not ten grand obnoxious, but uh, I've been wrong about things before. <laughs> I'm wrong all the time, what can I say? Live my life one wrong th thing out of my fat face at a time. <laughs> Alright, we are getting there. I haven't freaked out yet. It's amazing. This is a good day. I'm working on a tiny whoop and I'm not screaming at the top of my lungs yet. That's, uh... Well, I'm sure I'm forgetting something though. So uh, this is all just uh, this is all just ramp up to to the in inevitable. Fuck! I have to take it all back apart again. So stay tuned for that, cause I'm sure it's coming. I am sure there is a comedy of errors approaching. Leave them. I'll feed them. Is he? Is he or is he? Uh, Tiago says, "Have you checked uh, the sim? What the sim pro drivers use? 
Yeah, it's um, it's kind of all over the place. I mean, it, there are a couple companies that ha- it's you you really get what you pay for, and and most of the big sim guys are on like five ten thousand dollar rigs. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's not a ton of like it's it's pretty well known what to get. Um, the Huskenveld setups. Um, are some of the top ones, but they're also super, super, super expensive. Um, and then you've got like the the entry level stuff, which is like Logitech and stuff that you can get in like Best Buys and video game stores, um, and they're okay. But they're going to have the spring pedals. They're they're not going to have a load cell pedal set. The the believe it or not, the wheels like are really not the issue. Like you can you can get like a hundred dollar Logitech wheel that like it won't have the the raw power of like the the multi thousand dollar direct drive setups but the the raw power of the wheel is not like it's not everything um and yeah your your lap times and your immersion will improve uh from <clears throat> A better pedal set, much, 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 much more than a uh, a steering wheel. I think I also think that Gran Turismo Sport is limited as to which uh, which wheels you can run on it. So that would also, you know, make the shot. I mean, I'm sure if I go to fucking Google and type in what's the best wheel and pedal set for Gran Turismo Sport, it would tell me in three seconds. But I never listen to anything like that. I have to do all my own research and then come to the same conclusion after blowing 20 hours of my life. Because that's what crazy people do. Gotta make sure you don't get any of that buyer's remorse. It's the worst thing in the world and it'll make you... Nothing. It's fine. No big deal. Happens sometimes. Uh, what if I put a little? Uh, I got an. Uh, I got a little idea here. I got a little. I got a little plan. I'm gonna go uh, with a little. Oh, I see what they did. Those clever bastards. I should have run these out the rear. That's what she said. See, but these are fine. They're, they're not going to... Yeah, I can have exposed antennas. It's fine. Relax. Uh, okay, 2S. Set up with that little jib-jab. This guy is now no problem. He's going to reach without any issue. And I think that basically means that I put three screws in and I'm done. I, I, I'm, I'm, like, completely shocked about that, but, uh, hey, might have to fight it, uh, come on, man, get up in there, thank you, all right, camera's plugged in, let's see if it stretches, reaches, words, <laughs> oh my goodness, would you look at that, and I can even throw a little twist in it. That makes me happy. You guys know I like that. So let's give it a little spin. I'm even going to try two. That's how confident I am. All right, let's see how that is. Eh. Get up in there. Yabba. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's totally fine. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just perfect. And now look, I can run the, um, oh, you guys will see in a second, I can run the, um, this guy a lot better now, because I don't have that, uh, that receiver up on top getting all, all up in the way. Oh my god, this setup just became so much cleaner, it's ridiculous. I am going to need to do a little bit of, uh, retention on this UFL here, though, I th- think. I think I want to hold this guy down. Um, 
Yeah, because see, I. I f mm. Yeah, I'm gonna hold that down. So let me do that with the with this crazy stuff here. Uh, I believe there's a link to this. I believe there's an affiliate link to this down below. If not, let my let me know, and I'll add one because this stuff has changed my life. I'm not even being a little bit dramatic. My life is immeasurably better because of this stuff. <laughs> so we're just going to put a little bit on either side of the UFL, I think. Come on, little fella. There we go. Okay, so we got that. And we got that. And that's all she wrote. Poop that little guy on there, turn our UV on, cure it up. And we should be good, man. Um, Tiago says, CEO of a company he worked for had a 60,000 sim setup. Uh, he also had a Ferrari and a GT Continental. <laughs> That's amazing. Mr. Daniel Maurer says, looks like you can get a pedal set with a load cell and all sorts of adjustability vibration feedback for 600. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Wow, man, that's a lot. Um, Dauntless H says, also, Jamie's OnlyFans was a huge success according to her Instagram. Yeah, Kristen and I saw that. That's fucking crazy. Um, good for her, man. Uh, what else? Am I caught up on the chat? No fucking shit. Nope, I'm not. Roscoe Stick says, get the diamond file out. Um, talked about the goggles. <laughs> Remy Tim says, no, we're not here. You never started the to stream tonight. So I, I figured, I, I, I now have, um, I have the, uh, I have my flow kind of figured out to not forget to hit the buttons. Uh, and then B-Man's up until 10 a.m., Jesus. Uh... Don't, it says, how much better is running that wacky connector running two 1S versus an XT30 uh, running a normal S2, normal 2S? Uh, XT30 is way better for sure, uh, but I have a ton of these these batteries that, that I want to run. Um, so yeah, if, if I didn't have a million Tiny Whoop batteries that I wanted to use, this would absolutely have... Uh, an XT30 on it. Uh, the, the for me, it's either XT30 for. Uh, did I get enough on there? I wonder. It's either XT30 for 2S and up, uh, or BT 2.0 for for 1S. If if I had the choice. In this case, I don't, but that's still okay. Um, because this is a the, the, this is double solid pin. Oh no, there we go. Now I can see it. Man, that shit is clear. I I didn't think I had any on there, um, but it, it's just it's just clear. It, it's just very clear. The, uh, the stuff. Okay, here we go. Dropping that down into that front little cavity area just moving that wire over a little bit to get it out of the goddamn way of the screw that needs to come down through there come on yeah there we go stop it stop being a jerk you, you jerk wire you jerk wire jerk you jerk uh, one of the coolest things about GT Sport that I will say is like the community aspect of it. Like, so you can you can make uh, libraries for the cars, sticker sets, and and paint them in different wheels and shit like that. Um, and then you can upload those libraries. So people do like really cool shit. And um, that's something that Gran Turismo and, and Polyphony have always been really good at is is building the. Uh, 
the online experience to the Gran Turismo games. It's one of the big reasons that they always demolish Forza. Um, and yeah, they, they really outdid themselves this time. It's, uh, it's really good. It's, uh, it, it's really, really cool. You, like, they built, like, a whole fucking social media interface. It's, uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Racing games are, uh, are no longer just, like, turn left, use gas. <laughs> They've got, like, like Lewis Hamilton was a big... Uh, they, they managed to get him involved a bunch, and he's got, a, he's got, like, a bunch of lap times that you can chase after, and really cool stuff. Really impressed. Just wish I'd found it sooner. But that's... It's, it's funny. I, I never really just... Among Us, like, it took every... I, I just, I never jump on video games early. I always get to video games really late. And, like, I was kind of planning to do the same thing with Among Us. Um, it took, like, every bit of my, uh, my being to be like, yeah, I'll jump into a brand new game and, and play with the cool guys. But, you know, I gotta do that shit. I'm a I'm a I'm a big uh, high profile influencer now, making people's careers, <laughs> making people's dreams come true. Uh, Dauntless says, "Gotta go see you for Five Inch Friday." Uh, why not? Either tomorrow or Friday. Maybe both. When Kristen's not here, man, it's. Uh, it's it's a big party. There's strippers, there's booze. Yep. So I can't make any promises. Look how cool looking this thing is though. Holy hell, look at that, man. That looks like a fucking weapon. Oh. Damn. I mean I think it'd be cool looking, but it's 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 neat that it is. All right, let me just make absolutely sure that these cables are out of the way because I'm about to put a pointy screw through there. The front screw is the hardest because, like, everything is front. You know, the, the camera's on the front. I got this goddamn... What I should do is, is take the camera part off. You can just remove this bolt that goes straight through, and that would have made life a lot easier. But, um, I mean, why start making life easier now? It's... We've kind of done this the hard way every step. Oh my god, guys! It's done! I guess I gotta put propellers on it, but... Um, holy shit! I don't even care if it works. It's together, and the motors are on it. Ugh! And it's gonna be on 2S? What a... What a luxury this little rig is gonna be. Just kind of scooching this camera around on the bottom here a little bit. Look at that, man! All right, let's see what it looks like with the uh, Insta 360 Go in there. Eh. And we can we can like actually test the uh, the CG now. Now that it's fully put together. So wait, I think I put it in from this side last time. Oh, it's easier to it's it's easier to put this on now that the the quad is put together too. It's still a tight fit, and I'm still pushing the button by accident. But we want it to be a tight fit. Um, as long as the TPU doesn't rip, of course. But. Um, I wouldn't mind for that for this particular rig since it's on 2s. I wouldn't mind um, a little bit of a more sturdy TPU mount um, for this part. I might talk to the talk to uh, Red Shifters about that. But for the uh, for the 1s setups, I would actually definitely not want that um, because every like tenth of a gram is going to count. On a on a one S setup, trying to carry a uh, 
Insta360 go around. All right, so let's see. Uh, slots outwards, so ugly yellow label outwards. And let's get through there. Get it through that one. And all right, so we're bottomed out on the. Oh, I can run these even farther. For, oh, look at this. Are you kidding me? See, so this is why. I take forever to do builds so that when they're done, here I'll show you. When they're done, this guy just goes poop. <laughs> and like, you know what I mean? Like, just, just, just like it. I like it. I like them tight, guys. That's what it is. I like them tight. Look at that little shitbird. All right, the moment of truth on the CG. Yeah, it's front heavy. Yeah, it's it's definitely, it's for sure front heavy. So let's get just, let's just push these a little bit back. And let's see how that is. Oh, yes. So that is still a little... T you can see it, right? You can see it's still a little bit front heavy, but it's nowhere near as bad. Um, and I could even push these back a little bit farther. I don't think I will. I think I'll, I'll, I think I'll actually run them farther forward just so they're a little bit more secure. Um, but that is good news that you can push these batteries, batteries far enough back to... Uh, to at least attempt to fix that CG. Um, CG is something that all these cinema rigs have an issue with. My goodness, guys, look at that little thing. It's clean, it's simple, it's, it's got one big plug that I can just struggle to get off. What about top and bottom? Is top and bottom the, the move? Oh, God fingernail to move. Oh, I think it's a fingernail situation. Uh, hmm. Well, <laughs> it's hard to get the batteries unplugged. I'll say that. I might have wanted to make this cable a little bit longer. Uh, maybe I'll just leave the batteries plugged in. It's fine, right? Uh, I don't want to put anything... I don't want to put, like, a fucking screwdriver in there. Although, I guess I could. I mean, it's just... There's no voltage going through that part. Kaboom! <laughs> Alright, so I, I gotta, uh, I gotta figure something out here with the, the unplugging. I guess I could just keep pushing the one... Yeah, you know what? That's what. That's the move. The move is not to do both of these at the same time. It's to do one and then the other. So it's like that, and then I'm just going to push the one battery forward. And it's going to kind of bump into the camera, but who cares? I think that's it right there. I I I have this problem a lot on on tiny whoops getting the 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 power cable to a point my fucking hands get all sweaty like a like a disgusting sweat lord. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. There we go. Okay, so yeah, that's it. That's all it is. Just like, yeah, that's not bad. And it and it does go up and push the camera out of position, but that it's all TPU up there. Cool. Um, uh, is the... I wonder if it'll fly. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that it won't, because... No, 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 it definitely won't. This is fresh out of the box. 
I think I can just grab my, um, shit, maybe I will just do a dump from the other one. 2x, 1x versus 2s, it's because you t have a ton of 1s. Yeah, exactly. Um, here, look. Well, and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm building, um, I, I also want to be able to run it on the same batteries as the other whoops. I want all the whoops to run on, on the whoop batteries. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at this. Like, you know. I want to use, I want to use all these that I have. I, I actually, I only have like one, one or two, two S batteries right now. Um, I, I, I really do always try though, like to, uh, to reuse, to, to figure out ways to use the same batteries over and over again, um, rather than every single quad having a, a, a separate set of batteries. Like if there's any way whatsoever to get batteries from one, you know, to, to build rigs that reuse the same battery, that's what I'm trying to say. That, that's what I try to do is build rigs that, that use the same, uh, that share batteries, which is, which is hard. That's what she said. Guys, we did it. You know why? なんだ。Recommend some bent tweezers, Boost and JDM says. Boost and JDM, you're in luck. Um, I recently put up a, uh, a Patreon post called uh, Tool Testing. And in that tool testing post is a uh, Google Docs spreadsheet with uh, links to some of the new tools that I've been getting. And I think that these awesome bent angled tweezers um are on there and i really like these uh these are really good yeah they are a little bit different than the old set that i had the old set that i had um and i'm, I'm still getting used to this and and i don't the verdict is still kind of out so the these are the old ones see how they like the whole, the whole area closes, right? See what I mean? These new ones, the only thing I'm not sure of, see how the tip closes first? If you, if you push, you know, if, if you, if you give it a little oompa loompa, it flattens out. But the, I usually use these like real gentle and I keep having this, I got these different ones because they have, um, they have little, you know, Little groovies. They have little, little grooves. These old ones that I have don't. They're just smooth in there, which is good sometimes. But a lot of times, the I use these to hold wires, and the wires will rotate around on the smoothness. Um, so yeah, other other than the 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 tip thing with these, um, I like them. In that tool testing uh, post. I would love it if, if you got not these exact same ones and joined in on that testing. That would be super cool. Um, especially because these aren't perfect. I, I think I would rather have... Um, I, I think I would rather not have the tip design like this. I, I think I would rather have the old, you know, th this flat... butt. This flat butt tip. I don't know. 
Hopefully you know what I'm saying, because I, I don't know how else to, to describe it. <laughs> Hopefully you know what I'm saying, because I fucking don't. Um, yeah. Now watch, I, I won't have put those uh, those tweezers on there. Guaranteed. You're done work and everything? I'm done work too, fellas. We put this together. Um, beta flight setup, I've already done a million times. There's nothing really super interesting about that. Um, the, the interesting thing that I have to look up is... Uh, uh, wait, no, it's on... It did the it did the JESC beeps, didn't it? So it's Oh my god, okay. So it's already on JESC. Wow, okay, so the setup will be really simple for this then. Cool. Uh yeah. Red shifters. Really impressive. Look at that. I am um here I'll I, I can't let you guys see it without props on it. That's that's cruel. Uh so speaking of propellers um, I th think I'm gonna go with a tri-blade. Um, I think it's gonna be a gem fan tri-blade, since we're gonna be turning a million billion RPM, uh, from running 2S on these 18,000 kV motors, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scale these motors down in, uh, in Betaflight for sure. Uh... Well, if I'm going to scale them down, then I might as well run the four blade. Yeah, you know what? I am going to run the four blades. Uh, Sebastian SR13, uh, arguably, and in my opinion, the best Whoop pilot in the world. Uh, he says Gemfan four blades, hands down. And that's pretty much all I need. <laughs> I listen to the uh, to the to the super high-end pilots, and, and I take uh, their opinions very highly, and um, yeah, that's that, even over, like, my own testing, like, if, <clears throat> if like, two pro pilots say something is, is really good, for example, and I test it, I'm like, eh, it's kind of shitty, I'll just, like, assume that I'm the idiot, basically, <laughs> that, and that it is really good, um, but I'm not a good enough pilot to to get that, you know, to understand what it's doing or to get the extra performance out of it or, or whatever. So yeah, that's a thing. One, two, three, four. High left, high right, high left, high right. Good show, fellas. Let's play a game. It's called, Why the Hell Am I Putting Clear Props on the Front When They're In Ducts? <laughs> uh, okay, so now I need to put these things on upside down with props out. So, upside down, making sure that it's still props out. And, alright, so they didn't... They didn't make the holes in the top of the prop quite big enough, so I can, but I can probably just half-ass it. Oh yeah, it's totally fine. I'm just taking these fine tweezers and just ramming it through the top and spinning it around, just to move some of the. Uh... Oh God, I don't know, Dan. I, I don't know the. I don't. I just don't know the ready to flies. Um, uh, I mean. From what I've heard, the Mobula Six is still the 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 fucking truth. Um, I I've not flown a Tiny Hawk, so I can't talk about that. And sixty-five versus seventy-five. I mean, the only reason to do the seventy-five, in my opinion, is is if you're going to carry something. I used to say do the 75 if you're going to fly it outside, but just don't fly tiny whoops outside. It, it, it fly toothpicks and, and micro brushless and stuff like that outside. Um, the tiny whoop frames are not very strong, and and it, it, you just, there's just such a performance hit to um, 
So yeah, fly uh, fly tiny whoops inside, and then if you want to carry uh, an Insta 360 Go. Well, so one of these builds that I'm doing is a uh, is a 75 because I'm I'm curious about this as well. I'm, I'm wondering if I can run a uh, I'm wondering if a 1s 75. Um, I'm wondering how that's going to compare to this 2S 65. Um, because the weights are going to be, I don't want to say similar, but the, it, it, the weights are going to be in the same ballpark, uh, which will be interesting. And man, it is, it, it's just so awkward putting these props on upside down. <laughs> It's like, it's just like, oh man, this one's, what's going on with this? This one motor is sitting like very sideways. What the hell's happening here? All right, this one's fine. This one, I can see that the motor is like canted off to the side though. Why is that? Is this, is this motor... TPU thing not uh, locked in properly here, I'll bet you. Bet you that's the issue. Actually, or did I not screw all three things in? Oh, wait, no, is it better? Nope, it's not better. Um, yeah, the motor is like leaned forward. Why is that? Let me try. Let me just make sure. Uh, yeah, I had a little bit of uh, that one wasn't super tight, but I, mean, I guess these kind of aren't either. Uh, all right, so it's hitting right up in the front. So I mean, can I just like? Everything else so far with this frame has just sort of been like, use a little bit more force than you think you can, and it's magically better. So can I just do that in this case? Sure enough. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's all I needed to do is just push on it a little bit. And uh, yeah, the TPU kind of like seated itself. And now it's good to go. Cool. All right. This is going on this one. And then we're gonna paint some silver pants blue, guys. Are you excited? There we go. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, and they're uh, everybody's happy. Nobody's hitting. Damn. Look at this thing! Huh. Cool. I like it. I like it. I will fly it on the next one. I'm gonna go relax with Kristen for a little bit before she leaves tomorrow. And uh, I will see you guys either tomorrow or Friday. Or maybe both. Maybe even this weekend. Wilder says now fly. I'd have to do the whole setup. And my fucking transmitter's put away and shit. Um, and it's not bound. And Long list of excuses here. Uh, build one that will decimate all. Uh, I, I would... My current uh, uh, approach to Tiny Whoops, if I could redo it all, uh, would just be to buy... Two Mobula 6s with the 25,000 kV motors and one of the Mobula HDs. I would switch the, I would take the one of the HDs and one of the normal ones and swap the motors, and then that would give you a 1S HD rig. Um, you could then, if you wanted no props in view, if you did that and then you wanted no props in view, 
you could put that HD rig into this Red Shifter's Muon frame, uh, which is set up to hold that run cam split light up in the front there. So you'll get HD, no prop in view, from a little like, you know, 30 something gram all up rig. Um, I'm really excited to build this one. I have that set up sitting here just waiting, to, waiting ready to go. Um, and then you would have one absolutely crazy Mobula 6, no HD, with the 25,000 kV motors. Um, that's the same thing as my newbie drone setup, um, and it's an absolute riot. Like, it, you can do, like, momentum and throw moves inside the house. It's, it's crazy. And then you'd have another tiny whoop, uh, no HD, with the motors from the HD, which are a little bit lower kV. So you'd have, like, a lower kV, normal kind of, you know inside tiny whoop and that's what i would do those those the, um or maybe i don't know Th this newbie drone uh uh board is amazing but actually you know what i lied i lied uh uh newbie drone just dropped the price on the acrobee so that's what you should get um the acrobee board is the only one that'll take 2s so it's 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 not going to lock you in um, like the um, like the Mobula board is. And, and that's actually really nice. Like this this rig, for example, right? Like you want to really carry an Insta360 go around, you're probably going to want 2S. Uh, my goal of doing a shorter stream was failed, but that's okay. You guys are awesome. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe Friday. Maybe I'll just keep pointing at you. Here's some more uh, 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 run cam hybrid footage from the drifty schlip schlap. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Or the next day. Maybe the next day. What, why, why is this? There it goes.